Children's Librarians at the Hancock Hills Community Library. And I am here because this week marks a very special week for us in library world. This week is the beginning of Children's Book Week. And what Children's Book Week is, it's an annual celebration of books for young people and the joy of reading. Established in 1919, Children's Book Week is the longest running literacy initiative in the country. Every year, events are held nationwide at schools, libraries, bookstores, homes, wherever young readers can be found. And we thought to kick things off, we would have a classic story time with three books that I think you guys will enjoy. The first book we will be reading is called Ducks Away by Meme Fox. Ducks Away. One fine day, a mother duck waddled onto a bridge. A fluffy yellow duckling followed right behind her. Actually, it was two little ducks. No, it was three little ducks. Wait, it was four little ducks. What? It was five little ducks. Except just then, a sudden gust of wind swept the last little duck right into the river below. Oh no, quacked Mother Duck. What should I do? Where should I go? With four on the bridge and one down below. One of the other little ducks decided to take a look and he toppled into the river below. Oh no, quacked Mother Duck. What should I do? Where should I go? With three on the bridge and two below. Then another little duck peered over the edge and she toppled into the river below. Oh no, quacked Mother Duck. What should I do? Where should I go? With two on the bridge and three below. Then another little duck peeked over the edge and she toppled into the river below. Oh no, quacked Mother Duck. What should I do? Where should I go? With one on the bridge and four below. Then the last little duck foolishly lost his footing. And he tumbled into the river as well. Mother Duck looked down. The five little ducks looked up. Right, said Mother Duck. I know what to do and I know where to go. I'll have to fly down to the river below. She stepped slightly forward and she stepped slightly back. The five little ducks said, <coughs> then the first little duck said, Mom, go with the flow. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And Mother Duck flew to the river below. Quack, said the five little ducks. You're back. The end. The second book I have for you guys is called Groovy Joe, Ice Cream and Dinosaurs by Eric Litwin. Groovy Joe, Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. Groovy Joe saw something yummy. Groovy Joe started rubbing his tummy. Can you guys rub your tummy for me? Groovy Joe was living the dream. He had a spoon and a tub of ice cream and he started to sing. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! A little dinosaur stomped into the room. He glared at the ice cream and took out a spoon. He put on a bib, he pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! A big dinosaur burst into the room. He glared at the ice cream and took out a spoon. 
spoon. He put on a bib. He pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! A huge dinosaur smashed into the room. She glared at the ice cream and took out a spoon. She put on a bib. She pulled up a chair. What did Joe say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Roar! Oh no! The tub was empty. The ice cream was through. So the dinosaurs glared at you know who. What can Joe do? He turned over the tub and made it a drum. Groovy Joe beat out a rum tum a tum tum. The dinosaurs laughed. They rose from their chairs. They started to dance. They jumped in the air. Then what did they say? It's awesome to share. And everyone sang together. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. Love my doggy ice cream. The last book I have for tonight's classic story time is called The Lion Inside, and it is written by Rachel Bright. The Lion Inside. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold stood a mighty flat rock, all crazy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him ever at all. He got stepped on and sat on. He missed out on stuff. Ignored and forgotten, his mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top of the rock, times were quite different. It was Lion O'Clock. This huge toothy creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could. He was head of the pack. He was shouty and proud. He loved flexing his biceps and wowing the crowd. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. Then late one dark night in his tiny mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He leaped up in the darkness and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse with the weeniest squeak, were a little more grrr and a little less meek. Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in, and life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse, I must find out how. I will learn how to roar, and I will learn it now. But it wouldn't be easy. There was only one beast who could teach him this thing, but might make him a feast. It was time to be strong, take a chance after all. Forever was such a long time to feel small. So he made himself brave and he thought like a winner. He set off for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do. But if you want things to change, you first have to change you. The farther he climbed, the closer he got to the stumbling lion reclining on top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippity toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. Ahem, gulp, pardon me. Wake up, Mr. Lion, you've got company. Um, squeak, Mr. Lion, what I've come to you for is squeak. Do you think you could teach me your roar? 
A silence befell that twinkling plain. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time went so slowly, it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and let out and eek! The lion curled up in a terrified ball. He didn't like this, not one bit at all. Don't hurt me, he whimpered, or try to be nice. Well, this mighty great lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse Pete. I'm here as a friend. Let's hang out together, be pals to the end. That was a magical moment, for sure, when the mouse didn't feel at all small anymore. He had found his true voice and learned to speak out, and for that, you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked the rock better, now that the rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head, and the lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Yes, that day they both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and a lion inside. The end. Thank you everyone so much for joining us for Classic Storytime and kicking off Children's Book Week. If you guys would like to celebrate Children's Book Week with us, we would love to hear from you. Let us know your favorite books in the comments below, a book that you love, a book that really changed you, or send us an email at halfhallowchildrens at gmail.com. We are here to talk to you guys. While the library may not be open, we are still available and we look forward to hearing from you.